You know, some videos I feel like they don't even need an intro because you can just show the product and people know. Even I'm excited to review this palette. So we're gonna get into the basics of it first, and if you guys wanna skip this part, I will put a little time annotation right here because this is gonna be a little boring, just kind of going over exactly what the palette is for those of you guys who have not checked it out yet. So the front of it's nice, bright, and colorful, electric. It's got flowers on it. But are these flowers? These might not be flowers. I see flowers, but now the more that I look at this, the more it reminds me of like those ink blot things where it's like, mm, and tell me what you see. Yeah, these definitely are not flowers. You guys can decide for yourself what you think this is. But no matter what it is, it's cool looking. It is a plastic case and it's also magnetic when it closes. Definitely seems like it will be durable for traveling. I personally really like when things come in like this hard plastic or a hard case material. But then again, I also did almost completely, not completely, but two of them shattered the Naked 3 palette when I was traveling. That's my fault for not putting it in bubble wrap, but that's that. So if you are traveling with your palettes, of course I would wrap them in like bubble wrap or put them in between your clothes or something like that, but it seems like it's pretty durable. We then open up the palette in all of its glory. And this palette also does come with a double-ended brush. I have no idea where I put it. I usually don't use the brushes that come in the palette, so I can't even do like a review of it because I haven't used it yet. But it's cute. It's black. It's got purple on each end. This palette as a whole comes with 10 different colors. There is a silver, three different shades of blue, two different shades of purple. This one can kind of be like a plummy kind of pink sort of, it just depends on how you look at it. Uh, two different shades of green, a shade of pink, and a shade of orange. There's a lot of blue in this palette. Excuse me while I notice things as I'm doing the review. All the blues in this palette though are like completely different and this color in specific called Fringe reminds me a lot of this eyeliner by Urban Decay and it's called Deep End so I think these two would go very well together. And the colors are Revolt, Gonzo, Slow Burn, Savage, Fringe, Chaos, Jilted, Gilted? There's always like so many eyeshadow names that I have no idea how to pronounce. We're gonna go with Jilted. Urban, Freak, and Thrash. I personally am really liking this palette and before I go into like the swatches of them, I do want to address a couple things that people have brought up to me. And I honestly have no idea why this is like circulating around so much and people are like, <gasps> because this happens all the time. You guys really need to like read the cosmetics that you buy. I had to get the box. I don't know if you guys care about the box, but the box is the same as the palette. And then also on the back, oh, here's the brush. Also on the back, of course, it has all of its description, name, eyeshadow colors, you know, boxes, stuff. Now this is what people freak me out about. It says on the bottom, warning, slow burn, savage, jilted, and urban are not intended for use around the immediate eye area. A lot of pigments say that they're not meant for immediate use around the eye. Usually it's like colors like red or purple. Let's see what these colors are. Slow burn, savage, jilted, and urban. Okay, yeah, so slow burn, savage, jilted, and urban, of course. They're more of the red shades and the purple shades. This is totally normal. Do I know the exact reasoning of why they say not to use it around the eyes? No, I don't. I do not make cosmetics at this moment. But I do know that there are people out there that will have allergic reactions to just purple eyeshadows or blue eyeshadows, things that actually are intended for the eye. And obviously, I don't want to go against the warning and recommend it for around your eyes, but I've always used it around my eyes. Not always, but I mean, I've used pigments around my eyes, and and I have never ever run into a problem. Obviously always follow the manufacturer's directions, but I've never had a problem. And I'm also honestly sure that most of you guys have used pigments around your eyes and do not even realize that they are not intended for the eyes because you guys don't read the packages. I usually don't read the packages either, so I mean that's something that normal humans do. But if you guys wanted to do some more research into that subject that everyone seems to be freaking out about, um, there's no reason to freak out at all. And that's absolutely no reason for any of you guys to be like, I don't know if I want to buy the palette because it has this warning on there. I love it and I actually have Slow Burn, Savage, Urban, Gonzo, and yeah, I have all those on my eyes right now and I'm totally fine. I also had this on my eyes yesterday and no reaction whatsoever, which leads me to my second thing that people have brought up to me. I've been getting a crazy amount of comments saying that people are complaining this is staining their eyes. This is a really common thing for pigments, once again, just because they are so heavily pigmented to make them nice and bright, they usually leave a little bit of a stain, but I also had this look on yesterday and I used the Urban Decay Primer, which I used again today, and I've been using their primer for years, probably since I was like 13 years old, and you would think if it's gonna stain anybody, it's gonna stain someone the color of paper. I had no problems removing this whatsoever, and I just used Purity from Philosophy to take it off, but there are so many makeup removers out there, I don't see a problem with taking it off. But I also will say that just like anybody else, when I first got the palette, of course, I'm like dipping my fingers in it, like, yeah, let's check this out. No primer on my hands whatsoever, and when you do wipe the colors off, there is a slight, you guys can see the little rings where they were, so it might be possible if you don't prime your eyes that it might leave a stain, but you should always 
prime your eyes so you don't get creases in your eyeshadow. And at least with the Urban Decay primer, I have not had a problem with taking it off, which I'll show you guys a little bit later. On to the swatches, which everybody cares about. No one cares about this. So I'm be using the same primer that I used for my eyes, and this is the Urban Decay Anti-Aging Primer. And for the sake of the video, I'm just literally going to go like this. And rub it in. So the first color I'm gonna be applying is called Revolt. And it is a very shiny silver if you are wanting to do like a regular smoky black and white silver smoky eye. I think I said silver three times. Up next is one of my favorite in the palettes, which is called Gonzo. I'm now applying Slow Burn. And when I first saw this color in the palette, I thought it was like so, so pretty. It's kind of like a coral color, but when you put it on, it's more of an orange. I sounded like I was disappointed. It's not a disappointing orange, it's just when you see it in the palette, it looks a lot brighter than it actually is. This is a very pigmented color. It's just a little bit of a darker orange than it appears in the palette. After that is Savage, which is a really pretty, very, very bright pink. This guy looks identical to what it is in the palette itself. After that, we have a color called Fringe. And Fringe is also a metallic -y color. I don't know if you guys can see it reflecting in the camera. And just because I have this color here, this does not come with the palette. This is called Deep End, and this is the eyeliner that I said would go really well with this eyeshadow. And it's pretty much identical. And this eyeliner is called Deep End, and then I also realized that I have a pink eyeliner called Woodstock, and that will probably go well. Yeah. So the Woodstock eyeliner is a little bit darker than the Savage color for the electric palette. Once again, this does not come with the palette. It's just another Urban Decay pencil that I happen to have. I figured that I'd show you guys since it reminds me of the palette and because I mentioned it earlier. So this is it for the first row of the palette. I'm then going into the color Chaos. And the best way I can describe this color is a very heavily pigmented Chicago Cubs blue. Next to that is the color called Jilted. Like I said, if I'm saying this wrong, I apologize. And this color is kind of like a metallic-y pink, kind of almost like a light purple. It's sort of like a weird color, but it's really pretty, and I can definitely see it looking nice. I will probably do a tutorial with this color as well in the future. And yes, my arm is starting to get tired, in case you're wondering. After that is Urban. And yes, I have an eyeliner for this one, too. I'm using Ransom by Urban Decay. Once again, this eyeliner does not come with the palette. I just happen to have it. I actually have a lot of Urban Decay eyeliners. And this Urban color actually reminds me a lot of this palette. This is, I think, the first palette, if I can remember correctly, that I owned that was like a professional palette. I got this when I was like 14 or 15 years old. And this thing is so worn down. Like, it is dirty. It is gross. I cannot use this anymore. But just for the sake of comparison, Urban is pretty close to this Ransom color. And I'm sure you guys are probably like, that palette is really, really old. But this is my, my baby. This is just a memory that I keep. I do not touch this palette anymore. It is way too old, way expired. And it's just all around old. But as you guys can see a long time ago, Ransom was one of my favorite colors and so I really, really like Urban in this palette. Urban in the electric palette, I mean. The second to last color is called Freak. And it's a really light green and this also has a metallic finish to it. This is so funny that it's actually green and it's called Freak. For those of you guys who have been following me, you guys know my bullying story with the Joker and it's just funny that it happens to be a green color and it's called Freak. It's like the electric palette is relating to my life. And finally, the last color is Thrash, which is exactly what it looks like in the palette, it is the most vibrant green yellow color you will ever see. So once again, this is Revolt, Gonzo, Slow Burn, Savage, and then also the eyeliner of Woodstock. This one is Fringe with the eyeliner of Deep End. Chaos, oops, Chaos, Jilted, Urban, this is the Ransom eyeliner and then Freak and Thrash. And this really old palette that I'm referring to, you guys can buy this one new, by the way. It's just that I've had mine forever and it's just more of a memory to me. But going back to this palette, I actually feel like I'm gonna have such a moment right now that it's like, back in my day. I really feel like the Electric palette is an updated version of this really old Urban Decay palette. And like I said, that little palette was one of my favorite palettes and one of my first palettes. So this is really like, taking me back. And overall, I really love this palette. I am a big fan of Urban Decay. I always have been. There are not many products from them that I do not like, but I did want to post this review to clarify some of the questions I've been getting as far as staining. Oh, just to show you guys that this does come off, I'm putting a little bit of purity into a wet rag. We'll see if this actually works without having the sink. There is no stainage happening. And I'm really not scrubbing that hard. It's just that there's no, like, 
additional water. As you can see, their eyeliners are what's left. Their eyeliners are waterproof. This is just a little bit of extra water for me to get the soap kind of going on here. There are no stains other than their little bit from their eyeliners that I put on. So I just want to show that before I wrap this review up. And I would say, yes, this is worth the money. This is worth the buy. I love Urban K. I love their brand. And I love their products. If you guys want to check out the tutorial for the look that I'm wearing, you guys can find that here.